Hey, can I tell you a secret? Just come closer. Just a little bit closer. Do you know there's a way to get GMC registration without completing any exams? And you can still work as a doctor in the UK? If this is the first time you're checking out our channel, welcome. Basically what we do is we run a website that's totally free known as roadtouk.com and it will explain the ins and outs about everything related to the United Kingdom and what it takes for you to work as a doctor in the NHS. So if you've not already, please stalk us on all of our social media. Find us on Facebook, find us on Twitter, Instagram, and of course, YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe. Hi guys, my name's Debreeze and I currently work as a doctor in the NHS and let's talk about what I was saying. What we're discussing today is something known as the Medical Training Initiative, or MTI. You might have heard about it when we talked about it in another video about the ways that you can become a doctor in the United Kingdom. There are many routes. There are, you know, PLAB, postgraduate qualifications, and sponsorship. One of the ways that you can get sponsorship is via MTI. Now, I'm sure you guys are like, okay, wait, Breeze, you said we could do this without doing or any exams or without completing any exams. How? What, what, what? What's all the details? I need to know. I need to know. I don't want to take blab. Okay, slow your roll. Let's talk it through. First of all, there's a lot of stipulations related to the medical training initiative. It's not that you wake up one morning, you finished your internship and you sign right up and they're like, yes, we'll take you, sonny boy. We don't need anyone else. We need you. You need to be a fairly experienced doctor. There's a lot of information about MTI. I don't want to like clog up this video going through all of their person specifications, especially because from Royal College to Royal College, there are some small variations. But if you check in the description box, we've linked all of the deets and you can figure out what works best for you from that information. What I will, however, cover is a generalized idea of what you can expect if you want to undertake the medical training initiative. First of all, it's effectively a fellowship. So what I mean by that is you are being told, yeah, hey, great, we'll give you GMC registration and you can come work in the United Kingdom for two years. And the purpose of you coming here is for you to train in whatever speciality or department you've chosen to apply under. We're going to train you up. You're going to learn some good stuff. And then you go back to your country and you take all the information that you've learned from here and you go home. Your GMC registration stays intact. So long as you keep it intact, it's not some sort of like temporary GMC registration. If you want to keep it active, it can be active. If you decide actually, um, yeah, fine, I've come to the UK, but I want to stick around, you'd need to apply for a job separately. So when you come under the MTI scheme, you're on a visa known as a tier five visa. This visa will allow you to bring family as a dependent. So by this, I mean your spouse and your children, and they could be your dependents and they can come with you to the United Kingdom. But the type of visa that the tier five is, you don't get points or time towards the ILR or the indefinite leave to remain, which is your pathway to becoming a citizen in the United Kingdom. For that, you would need to be what was formerly known as the tier two visa or the health and care visa, which is basically what other doctors who come to work in the UK come under. Now, if you're worried about, well, okay, I really want to do this. And I also want to maybe think about getting the ILR. How will it work? What you've got to do then is as soon as you're, you know, your fellowship's about to end, your MTI scheme's about to finish up, you will need to find a job. You need to talk to that hospital that you're working at or find other jobs via the NHS jobs website. And if you're confused how to do that, we've got a video about it and you've got to apply for a job. And once they give you a certificate of sponsorship, you need to switch your visa from a tier five onto this health and care visa. So what are the at least generic highlights from what I've said so far for the MTI scheme? Yes, you don't need PLAB. Okay. There are other stipulations which may or may not include either one part of a postgraduate exam or some form of an academic degree. Another point, you usually need to be an individual who is fairly experienced. The program works where you are a fellow. So they're looking for somebody at a registrar level who would come into this post, learn something, effectively take the information they've learned and then go back to their country. That doesn't mean, however, you can't do this 
and then think about finding another job in the United Kingdom. Just remember, like I said, the time you spent in the UK under the tier five would not count towards an ILR. Individuals otherwise working in the UK under health and care visa after five years can apply for indefinite leave to remain and then a year after that are eligible for British citizenship. So if you come under the MTI, those two years would not count and your time would start from the time you are under the new visa, the health and care visa. Now, another thing to remember is with the MTI scheme, there are obviously fees for the application. It's a more rigorous application process because like I said, guys, you're applying effectively for a fellowship. It's not like a non-training job. You are effectively a trainee, but you're just under this scheme. So what you have to remember is you need to be extremely precise in your application process read everything that they give you. The Royal Colleges will all have the information about what they particularly want from you. So they might want a CV, they may do several interviews. And you have to remember, because of the nature of the scheme, it doesn't mean that you can go anywhere in the country. There will be particular hospitals that will be willing to sponsor you for the initiative. So when you get through you know the initial hurdles you've done your application you've done your interviews they may only say that well actually we've only got let's say five hospitals available in the united kingdom that you could be applying for and those would be your options and that's just because think about it i mean if you're coming into this role in this way you want to be in the type of hospital that would be sponsoring the post so they have to have reason to want you there they have to be looking for an individual who's filling whatever niche that they have there and of course you want to be in a place that will have those types of training and learning opportunities and chances for you to pick up something new so remember that when you're coming into it all things aside you know if you're confused about whether or not you want to work in the United Kingdom the MTI is a great way for you to get a taste of the UK without fully committing as it were what I mean by that is like I said before you come you work for two years you go back home if you felt in the two years that you were doing the MTI you were like you know what guys this isn't actually my cup of tea I'm, I'm happy and, and you know grateful for everything that I've learned and the information that you know I've picked up and the experience but I think actually I'd rather go back home and just take this information there and do what I would with it. Um, otherwise, if you're like, you know what, I was kind of on the fence about moving to the United Kingdom. I did MTI and I feel like this is actually what I want to do. I do want to live in the UK. I do want to work as a doctor in the UK. You have the option there as well. In the process of you looking for the jobs, you will have to find, you know, on the Royal College website. So whatever Royal College you want to go under, Royal College of, you know, obs and gynae, psychiatry, medicine, whatever. Go on their website, go up to their search bar, type in medical training initiative, see what comes up, read all the information, apply. Occasionally, you might find these jobs on the NHS Jobs website. I mean, it's not like a, a fixed guarantee that you would find it. It's probably easier for you to find it by going to the Royal College website and following all of their instructions. They usually also have an email address that you can ask them any questions on or anything that you're confused about and a fairly decent frequently asked questions box. Now remember, in order to apply, you have to go through your relevant Royal College. Some of you may be able to find if your country will locally sponsor you and have you come under this initiative. And what it means is the type of, I guess, certification or certificate that you end up getting at the very end. So if you're sponsored by the Royal College, you're going to get a diploma in UK medical practice at the very end. And well done you, use that as you'd like. And um, if you are being sponsored by a third party or from your country, you will basically get a training completion certificate. And however that's utilized back home, you'd need to find out. But that is what you would effectively get by completing the medical training initiative. Just remember, just because you're not eligible for MTI doesn't mean there aren't other ways for you to get GMC registration. Please, we've got like a thousand videos about the other ways for you to get GMC registration, be it via PLAB or any of the postgraduate routes. But occasionally, we get messages from individuals or emails from people who are like, do you know what? I just feel stuck. I've got all of this experience. I feel like if I do PLAB, it's just too basic for me, given the amount of experience I have. Or... I'm halfway through a postgraduate exam or I'm doing some type of postgraduate training and I just I just need a bit of a change to see what I really want to do and how I want to do it. And the MTI is a great way to do that. So keep it as an open option. 
don't necessarily think that this is your only option. Even if you, you know, did MTI and then you started working in the UK, you could still later on join a specialty training program. There are provisions and ways for you to do that so long as you meet the competencies and requirements. Remember, just because you did MTI doesn't mean suddenly you're a consultant at the end of it. That's not how the program works. That's not what it's for. Now, you might ask, well, does that mean when I go back to my home country, am I a consultant? you would need to check with your local medical regulatory board, would they accept it? And that's an important thing as well. If you come and do this fellowship, will it be accepted back home? Will it give you what you want it to give you? So at the end of the day, think about the medical training initiative as a way for you to get GMC registration without PLAB, without completing a postgraduate exam. If you feel that you just kind of want to get an idea and get a feel for the United Kingdom, but don't think that there are you know, hard and fast rules about whether or not you have to do this or if you aren't eligible, does that mean the world is ending? The world is never ending. There are so many different ways for individuals and international graduates effectively to come and work in the United Kingdom, be it via the you know UK Foundation program, via PLAB, via so many different training programs. And this is just another one of those programs. So we really hope at least this has clarified a general idea of what the MTI scheme um, means and what you would have to undertake in order to apply and progress with the MTI scheme. Yes, I know you might still have a trillion questions, completely understandable. I want you to definitely check out the description box. We've given a ton of links, but if you're still like, do you know what? I've looked at the links. I've watched the video. I still don't know what's happening. You can comment below, or if you're like, no, 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 no. this is way too much. I need you to talk me through this. You're always, you know, free to book a personalized guidance session for which we again have linked the um, link to it down in the description box. But as always, until next time, guys, please make sure you are following us on YouTube. Subscribe to us, you know, on this channel and on our Facebook, on our Instagram, on our Twitter, our newsletter, all the great, amazing things. And check out our Road to UK forum and we'll see you next time.